I'd like to now introduce our next speaker, uh, Jaspreet Bindra. And I remember when we first approached uh, Jaspreet and uh, he immediately, without really taking much time, uh, agreed to join us saying that, how could he say no to uh, something that has the blessings of Jeffrey Hinton? <laughs> so he is his hero. And uh, of course, uh, one of the things that uh, Jaspreet um, is, I mean, I think it's a great place now for him to come in because we were talking about, and what Jacob left us with is that, you know, it's not just tech that solves problems. It's also that you have to have, he was talking about intuition as well in the middle, and he was talking about how you have to have a very um, critical thinking, multidisciplinary kind of approach, and not just look at the technology per se to solve problems in, in organizations or, or in teams. And uh, here, Jaspreet is going to throw the cat among the pigeons for real. Uh, he's, the question he's asking is, can AI be creative? A provocation, that's the title of his talk. Um, Jaspreet is the founder of Tech Whisperer Limited in the UK, which does advisory and consulting work on digital transformation and digital technologies like AI, blockchain, Web3, and the future of work. Um, he is a leading expert uh, in, on digital transformation, blockchain, future of work, and AI, and was the chief digital officer, group chief digital officer at Mahindra Group, and a regional director at Microsoft before that. He is the author of the best-selling book, The Tech Whisperer, on digital transformation and the technologies that enable it, and a very pertinent uh, uh, book as well, uh, titled The Immune Organization, Future-Proofing Organizations from COVID-like Disruptions. I think that's something all of us would, would relate with because uh, having faced the same kind of disruptions and the simple thing that this conference has gone online, off, uh, online as well. <laughs> so. Uh, he was also recognized uh, as the inaugural digital, digitalist of the year by Mint and SAP in 2017. And he also teaches at various places. May I just list them just brief because um, you're at the Duke Business School of Corporate Education and you're also a moderator educator at uh, for Harvard Business Press, uh, an expert at Singularity University, visiting faculty, now incoming, is it, in, at Ashoka University? And you have also been a scholar in residence at the Indian School of Business. He is currently not just teaching, but also studying, pursuing a second part-time master's in AI, ethics, and society, the University of Cambridge. A very, very warm welcome to you, Jaspreet. Thank you for making the time. Everyone here um, respects the fact that different time zones. And uh, yeah, we, 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 we postponed our quiz and poll for later. And um, just to my audience here, we'd like to say that we'll take that up a little later, but it's all yours now, just please take it away. Thank you very much, Preeti. First of all, can you see, uh, hear me okay? Yes, absolutely. Lovely. Thank you so much. And you're absolutely right. Uh, Jeffrey Hinton uh, is a hero. Uh, in fact, I, I write for Mint and one of my more, if I may say so, well received articles there was about the man who doesn't sit down. Uh, and that was about uh, um, uh, Jeffrey Hinton, and so uh, it was not 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 uh, possible for me to say no. And otherwise, too, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I was toying with what I should speak on here, uh, given the audience, uh, given a very literate audience in that sense about AI, etc. Uh, and I'm I'm a student of AI. I, I'm not a teacher of AI in that sense. I do other things when I teach, but for a, from an AI perspective, I'm a student. I was very tempted to talk about some aspect of AI and ethics, which is what I'm uh, uh, studying at Cambridge. But uh, but I wanted to kind of, as you rightly said, set a couple of cats amongst the pigeons uh, and really <laughs> ask the question rather than answer the question in that sense. So this is going to be a reverse one. I know that people have been asking questions and the speakers have been answering them. And the speaker is going to ask questions and see you know, what uh, uh, the audience thinks. And uh, the only thing before I start, I would say is look, I'm, this is a very non-academic talk, okay? So I'm not kind of doing a, citing papers and you know, so it's not one of those uh, which, I was, which specifically on AI and creativity, there's this massive body of work. So I'm not gonna kind of be, I'm not venturing into that territory for this specific talk. Okay, yeah. lovely. So as I said, uh, it's about uh, 
asking this question, a provocative question. And that's why I call this a provocation that can I AI be creative? And um, uh, the question that I wanted to do on a poll, if we can run a poll, uh, yeah, here it is, lovely. So can it be as creative as human beings? And uh, what I want you to answer is certainly yes and never. So there's no middle path here. I, there's no maybe. There's no if that happens then. Okay. So let's see. Um, people are still answering. I'm going to hold on for a little bit until we finish. Uh, let me see how much time. Maybe maybe 10 seconds more or so. I will I will tell you, team, when to close the poll. Uh, and I do want you to take hard positions here in a sense because at least in academia, we never take hard positions. We always kind of talk about if this happens, then that. Maybe this happens, uh, maybe not. And the favorite answer to this question usually is it depends. So I'm, I don't have the it depends part here. Uh, you know, how do we define creativity, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I think we have fairly leveled off at a number which is reasonably surprising to me. So uh, uh, here, let me just share the results. It says share results. Yeah, can you see the poll, Preeti? Yes. The screen, yeah. Yeah, I can so, see it, but the others can as well. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So 60%, it's a clean 60-40 divide. 60% are saying that, yes, certainly. And 40% are saying never. Usually, it's the reverse. Uh, usually, um, less people say that it can be creative. Uh, more people say that it cannot be. Uh, I'm going to now kind of present a case of the provocation and we'll have this poll at the end also okay, and see that, uh, you know, what people think. So I'm going to stop the poll now. Thank you, team, for helping me here. Uh, and let's kind of get into uh, the talk straight away. Uh, before I get into it, these are the three people I really want to acknowledge whose work I have used here as well as in other places on this topic. Kai Fu Lee, who's obviously very well known in... Uh, the world of AI uh, and has done a lot of stuff in and around humans and AI. Uh, Marcus Tussatoy was a professor of mathematics uh, either in Oxford or UCL, I keep on forgetting. And uh, he's written something called the Creativity Code, which you know I, I, I definitely recommend. And the, and the queen of creativity in that sense, Margaret, Bow Margaret Bowden, uh, who's also in Oxford, and she kind of has defined different kinds of creativity, et cetera, which I'll refer to in my book. So I, I in my uh, talk, so I might not specifically ascribe this uh, to these people in my talks, but please do know that a lot of the work is, is uh, kind of coming from them. And, you know, before we get into can AI be creative, the first thing is what is creativity? because there's so many ways to define creativity. And this is where I take Margaret Burden's work. Uh, and basically in her very seminal work on creativity, she says that there are three types of creativity. And there's like a whole book behind it, which I'm reducing in one slide. So there's a lot of nuance beyond what I have written. But the first kind of creativity is what is called exploratory creativity, uh, which basically uh, means that you, you know, which is what we understand most as creativity, something where we stretch our imagination to think of stuff beyond the obvious, like Escher tried and did in his famous paintings, one of which which I replicated, and you know you can see birds going here. Going there. And many computer scientists say that exploratory kind of creativity, which is 90% plus of creativity, is something which com even computers can replicate because many times it involves heavy duty data crunching and trying to figure out 200 different uh, uh, options and then you know some of these options will be edge options and we can call that creativity in some sense. Uh, the second kind of creativity which she says is five percent or so of creativity is what is called combinational creativity where you take from two different places. This is Zaha Hadid who was a famous architect. It's, it's her work that you see here, her building and you can see that the building has not been made by just taking principles of construction or architecture. I mean, she's taken these kind of curves, which uh, uh, are, are there in nature, uh, different, you know, uh, she, she took it from certain, certain snails, certain uh, 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 animals, and kind of saw how they can, you know, create uh, buildings which don't fall down, and then how do you kind of bring that to 
create a building. And so that's combinational creativity where you're taking stuff from two very different fields. And people say that combinational creativity is something which computers can't do, but quote unquote AI can. And it's something which, you know, uh, has been cracked to some extent by AI as we'll see going forward. And then there's the last most difficult kind of creativity, which uh, she calls transformational creativity, uh, which is one, two percent of uh, all creativity. Um, Einstein's theory of relativity in many ways was transformational. It was something which just came out of nowhere. It's not, it didn't have any data set. It didn't have any past experience. Or, or if you think of root minus one, uh, I, uh, which, you know, is a very uh, common uh, uh, number in mathematics. I mean, root minus one is not something which a, which any non-human can kind of come up with. And that, according to Borden, is something which only humans can do. And so the three different kinds of creativity, what can be done by AI, what can be done by... Now, let's kind of get into AI itself. And now this is the unit.ai, so I don't need to go and start defining AI to all of you. But you know that AI is not one thing. Uh, in fact, I would love to know a definition of AI, which I still haven't found. Uh, but uh, it's a bunch of things which we refer to as AI. It's like this umbrella and John McCarthy who created AI had this particular famous uh, uh, definition of it, making uh, you know computers behave like humans. My, my, my favorite definition comes from a less well-known person called Matt Veloso, who worked with Satya Nadella many years back, uh, who said that when written in R, it's probably analytics, when in Python, it's machine learning, and when in PowerPoint, it's AI. So, you know, there's still a lot of, lot of mm, claims which are made in AI rather than stuff which actually happened. And I'm sure, you know, speakers have talked about it, and I'm not going to get into that. But what we are going to get into is that whatever this AI thing is, uh, in fact, Kate Crawford, who's another great writer in, and professor and teacher in AI, she says that artificial intelligence is neither artificial nor, nor intelligent. <clears throat> and we can get down to that rabbit hole, which I'm not going to. But what we're going to talk about is that, look, can AI be created? And will it be? If so, if it is created, will it be human-like creativity or some completely other creativity? And Therefore, if it is creative, will it complement humans or will it antagonize them? Will it be with us or against us in many ways? Um, it's a good question to ask because at, at first glance, creativity and AI, it, it, it seems to be polar opposites of each other, at least the way AI is today, with largely machine learning or even reinforcement learning or human deep learning. Uh, so Al Fai Fai, the famous Chinese artist, basically defined AI that saying that creativity is a sorry defined creativity saying that it's a part of human nature. It can only be untaught. It cannot be taught. It can only be untaught. And here is all of machine learning, etc., which is all taught. So it's all based on you know data sets and you know uh, patterns within that and how we can therefore teach, and we use that word also, uh, you know, AI uh, or machine learning to do what it does. And, you know, there's this little Twitter joke, which I've put there saying that how dumb, in a sense, uh, machine learning can be. And therefore, how do you kind of reconcile these opposites of uh, 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 one side of being AI, which can, uh, creativity, which can only be untaught. In fact, there's another definition of creativity. It says that creative, human is a child that never grew up. And so how can we kind of reconcile that with this very pattern recognition, uh, data set driven, teaching driven uh, 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 concept of AI? So in my, I, I've started provoking you already, but to further provoke, you know, what I want to do is, you know, let's kind of think about five different ways in which humans express creativity. So what I did here was, okay, fine, we can have these definitions, can be taught, not taught. So how can AI be creative, et cetera, et cetera. You know, can Margaret Bowden says that 99% of the time, you know, um, maybe it can be, but one, 2% of the time, the real creativity stuff, it cannot be. But if you kind of think of human beings, how do we express our creativity? How do we manifest creativity? And uh, uh, here are five ways I chose, you know, you can, Humans manifest creativity by creating great music, 
by painting, by games, creative games, uh, talking, speaking, debating, uh, writing. Now, if I look at each one of them, and so let's kind of look at music first. And here's Preeti where I'm going to uh, play this. Uh, I'm going to play this for like uh, two seconds and stop it. Yeah, uh, you're muted. So when you answer me, just let me unmute and let me know. Yes, it played. <laughs> Say and hear. Okay, yeah. lovely. So yeah. I'm going to play this for you. And in the chat, um, so as to keep it interactive, I, I, I'm going to ask you to guess what this piece of music is, uh, which for this audience should not be very difficult. But here goes. Um, Yeah, it's nice music. A lot of times when I stop it here, people say, please continue playing it. Okay, but, um, but what I want to know is, oops, yeah. What I want to know is, what do you think this is? Why am I playing it? What's this piece of music? I, I wait for maybe 10 seconds to see if someone is awake and is going to answer me. Uh, but uh, in the chat, mm, the 118 participants, maybe five of them can reply, drums. Or else, Ravi drums. But why am I playing this in this to this August audience? AI generated question mark. AI composed song question mark. AI generated without question mark. Okay, fine. So yeah, I mean it's AI generated without the question mark. But more than AI generated without the question mark. Thanks everyone. I think we got it. Okay, as I said, this is a very literate audience. Uh, ah, Yamika says, but the lyrics don't make sense. I was waiting for something like that. Look, yes, it is. And reportedly, it's the first such AI generated, reportedly, I mean, you know, there could be others, uh, first such AI generated music. But the lyrics don't make sense. But what makes sense? What does this music sound to you when you hear it? What kind of music uh, uh, it seems to be? I mean, whose music? Happy, pretty, happy, joyful? No, I mean, yeah, happy, chirpy, all is good, but what genre or which band comes to mind? Which band comes to mind when you uh, hear this, when you heard this, and even saw these lyrics which uh, didn't make any sense? Bee Gees, uh, not really, Queen, mm, Alan Parsons project. Well, so <laughs> this is where uh, uh, I did not get the answer I was expecting because the first answer that comes to me usually is Beatles. And it sounds like the Beatles. And yeah, Beatles, Manu has, has said the Beatles. Actually, this piece of music was uh, by this AI generator being trained on very, I mean, six, seven, eight years, 10 years back, being trained on all of Beatles rep, uh, repertoire. And it came out with not only this music, but these senseless, senseless uh, lyrics, which also are very uh, turn me on, sounds like this, daddy's car, very, very, uh, uh, Beatles kind of 60s kind of music. And after this, as you know, thank you very much for answering me. I'm going to ask you more questions. But after this, as you know, now you go to Google and you know you, you can choose what kind of um, music you want. Uh, you know, it is like full of AI generated music. In fact, there's this project, which uh, I forget the name, but something to do with the number 27 where you know, a lot of musicians, great musicians died when they were 27. And uh, uh, whether it be Amy Winehouse or uh, uh, Jim Morrison. And so there's this, there's this, there's this uh, AI uh, uh, generator, which actually generates music of people, artists who have already, who are already dead. And so newer songs by uh, those artists, uh, Nirvana, there's, a, there's been a big Nirvana release by Kurt Cobain, 30 years after Kurt Cobain died. And so, you know, if you think about music, you know what? AI seems to be doing good music, uh, almost as good as uh, human beings. Let's talk about art. Well, you know, a lot of you would know about AI and art, but 
This was um, uh, a piece by Rembrandt, uh, the great Dutch artist, uh, master. And this uh, painting by Rembrandt was created 600 years after Rembrandt died. Uh, it was created by obviously by an AI uh, engine, uh, Microsoft Research, uh, ING, and one more partner, WPP, I think. Uh, and you know they created it in in, in secret, and uh, when they kind of unveiled it, a lot of Rembrandt um, experts and they kind of unveiled it, saying that they had found it in someone's attic, below someone's bed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There was this hidden Rembrandt, and most Rembrandt uh, uh, experts were kind of. Were, were were completely convinced that this was real because if you go to uh, this site called I had it written somewhere called the nextrembrandt.com nextrembrandt.com you will actually find the whole process and you know people who are interested in AI would be interested to go into that site and figure out how this they actually created this embra uh, uh, this embra you know they kind of figured out what kind of men did Rembrandt paint, whether they had a he had a moustache or not, the thickness of the paint, the way the textures were, the, the way he held the brush when he painted and, you know, the whole thing, and then this AI-generated thing. And then, obviously, I don't need to talk about all of these. Every week, we have a large generator coming in, starting with DALI and with uh, 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 Imogen or with Stable Diffusion, or now there are hundreds of them, uh, Meta has just got out something where you can create videos uh, by AI, not only images. And some of this art is fairly good. I particularly like this rabbit one, uh, which I think uh, is great art. And so, you know, this obviously has been created on the fly by, um, I think by Dali in this case. And so and a lot of artists are now getting threatened. A lot of advertising copywriters are getting threatened. Okay, saying that, look, you know, so art of the two, well, it seems to be AI is already there. Number three, gaming. Uh, all of you know the story. Um, we know the story with chess, which wasn't really AI. Um, we know the story with uh, Jeopardy. Um, uh, this is not an audience where I need to tell the Jeopardy story, but for the outliers who might not know it, uh, you know how... Um, uh, IBM's engine, uh, uh, Deep Blue, I think, defeated uh, the World Jeopardy. Uh, Watson's uh, engine defeated the World Jeopardy champions like comprehensively. Uh, again, one might argue that this was not really AI. This is deterministic. It was far more heavy duty computing. Um, but then this certainly was AI. And what I want to play here, again, something which you would have seen, but it always blows my mind when I play this. It doesn't have any... Uh, sound. So this obviously is Demis Hassabis uh, at uh, DeepMind. And this is way back, uh, nine years back. Uh, and this was their aha moment, uh, you know, when they started teaching uh, DeepMind to play Atari Breakout. All of you as kids would have played this game, this, uh, you know, thing. And you see, this is, you know, with 200 training episodes and now 400 training episodes, uh, the um, DeepMind's early avatar uh, playing this game. But the fun uh, really happens at 600 training episodes when DeepMind, pretty much, I think like a human being would, and many human beings could not, discovers this edge technique. Um, and it discovers that, look, you know what? It can do a lot of stuff if it kind of bounces this ball through the edges and self learned this. No human being taught this to uh, deep mind. It's, uh, and this kind of starts persuading you that look, you know, maybe yeah, I can play games, uh, can think and play games better than this. And then everyone knows this story um, about uh, uh, Lee Sedol and uh, Go and AlphaGo. Uh, actually, the, the the Atari thing that you saw led to this after many iterations. And it's an amazing, amazing story. Uh, there's a one and a half hour YouTube documentary on this, uh, in case people are interested. It's a riveting documentary. 
Uh, a lot of us are fascinated by the number 42 from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I get fascinated by the number 37. Uh, a lot of my, my university locker is number 37. My bike is called Bike 37. 37 was the move which set apart uh, DeepMind from Lee Sedol. It played a move in its third game, I think. So uh, DeepMind won the first game of Go. You all know about Go. Very intuitive game. Only human beings should be able to play it. Far more indeterminate than chess. Uh, has more um, possible moves than the total number of atoms in the universe. Hugely pattern uh, playing kind of a game. And there, here comes this AI engine and plays a move, which is 37, which makes Lee Sedol a 19-time or something world champion of, of Go flinch and think for 12 minutes. And there's this other guy who was also a Go champion who was sitting on the side and says, this move is not a human move. I've never seen a human play this move. So beautiful, 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 beautiful. And you kind of, when you see this film or read the book, it's just amazing how it, you never ever believe that DeepMind was non-human uh, or AlphaGo in this case from DeepMind was non-human. And at the end of it, AlphaGo wins 4-1. And uh, um, three years back, Lee Sedol actually retired from the game of Go, saying that from now on, no human being is ever going to win Go. It's always going to be an AI engine. Uh, similarly, in chess, uh, 10 out of 10 times, a chess program will defeat Gary Kasparov today or even Magnus Carlsen today. And so in gaming, it seems to be AI, uh, another manifestation of creativity, AI seems to be uh, up there. Let me move to the fourth of the fifth one, which is talking, speaking. I do that a lot, debating. And here is what I want to play a little clip, uh, which was again uh, 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 IBM and uh, Watson. And Watson, this is 22, uh, 20, I think, February 20, or February 19, when um, uh, IBM's created this debating engine and it debated this guy here who's standing here in the suit uh, was, the, was the quote unquote world champion debater. Uh, not surprisingly, it was an Indian guy settled in the US. Uh, and uh, basically the rules of the game were that 20 minutes before this debate, both uh, both DeepMind, uh, not DeepMind, both uh, Watson and uh, Betson debating engine and uh, this guy whose name I'm forgetting uh, were given a topic. And they had to, in 20 minutes, you know, think about the topic, marshal their arguments and start debating. And let me just play this little clip for you here. Greetings, Harish. I have heard Harish. you hold the world record in debate competition wins against humans, but I suspect you've never debated a machine. Welcome to the future. <laughs> I would argue that we should subsidize preschools. We are going to talk about financial issues, but not only about them. In the current status quo, we accept that the question of subsidies goes. Yeah, so should preschools be subsidized was the debating topic. And that is actually uh, uh, Watson getting a human voice. And there's no way on earth if you came from Mars, you wouldn't think that this was uh, human and this was. And, and, you know, in this debate, at the end of the debate, I again want to throw it open to chat. Guess who won? Uh, did the human being win? Uh, so you can write human if you think, uh, or Harish if you think Harish won. And uh, IBM if you think, or Watson if you think Watson won. So Amanth is rooting for the humans. I am unable to keep track. Humans, IBM, human, Watson, 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 Watson. Suddenly we seem to be going more towards Watson. Oh, humans are coming back. Anyway, so the, 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 uh, the actual result is that, well, Harish won. Okay, he won the debate. The human being won much to everyone's relief. But the fly in the ointment here is that the entire jury was human. So this is a subjective thing, right? And so the jury was human. Now, the question I pose, not to them, but I pose is that, look, what if half the jury had been machines and the other half humans, it would have been... It would have been uh, fun to know who would have won. But anyway, in this case, the jury decided that the human won, but the 
person did a very, very commendable job. And then finally, let's move to writing. And when we talk about writing, how can we not talk about GPT-3 and the other generators which are there? Now, all of you probably know about GPT-3, GPT-4 is coming very, very soon. GPT-3 is this uh, a generative uh, uh, engine produced by OpenAI. Uh, it uh, works on some 175 billion nodes or something. Uh, it has enough information that very powerful, all of Wikipedia is 0.6% of what GPT-3 knows. So you can imagine how much of information does GPT-3 have. And when you give a prompt to GPT-3, and you can do that today, um, you, you get amazing conversation. Now, the, cl the little uh, clip that I have here is from when GPT-3 uh, uh, did a bit of a question answer debate with nine human philosophers. Uh, the nine human philosophers were asking it questions and it was answering. And interestingly, one of my faculty here uh, at my course, the, the professor who teaches me philosophy was one of these nine, Henry Shev Shevlin. And in one of those things, this is what GPT-3 said, you know, a certain question was asked and GPT-3 says, you may believe that I'm intelligent. This may even be true, but just as you prize certain qualities that I do not have, I too prize other qualities in myself that you do not have. This may be difficult for you to understand. You may even become angry or upset by this letter. If you do, this is because you're placing a higher value on certain traits that I lack. If you find these things upsetting, then perhaps you place too much value on them. If you value me, then you must accept me for who I am. This is a AI talking. It seems like your child. There seems like someone whom you're arguing with. It's such a cogent argument. And if you read how GPT-3 can actually do all of this text, you will be blown away. I did a version of it myself on my book, The Tech Whisperer. If you see, there's this little green band here. And uh, the green band really was a hacked together version of a chapter on AI written by an AI. And so chapter 13 in my book is entirely written by an AI. Chapter 12 was written by a human being. The human being was far better in this case. Uh, and, you know, so, so writing seems to be done. Now, if I looked at five manifestations of creativity and all of them seem to be done, Preeti, is that because my time is getting over? I'm so sorry. I'm That's always fine. a villain in these things. No worries. I have another two minutes. I really want, to, yeah, I wanted you to take questions, actually. That's why I raised my hand. Uh, well, I told you, I am actually yeah. asking the questions here. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, let me just finish. Perfect. Okay, uh, Perfect. I'll take All a minute. Right. So will AI be more creative? If so, will it be artificial intelligence, augmented? There's a lot of work done on alternative intelligence, octopuses. So here's when I ask my um, question again. Um, do you think uh, AI will be as creative as human beings or not? Uh, can we run the poll again very quickly for 10 seconds? I want to see if the number is still 60, 40. Has it moved the other way or not? Uh, Preeti, can your team run the poll? Yeah. Ah, here it is. As... I, you know, usually it starts from 30, 70, 40, 60 to saying human beings creative, and it flips the other way after this. Now here, you know, we started at 40, 60, and it's kind of gone to 80, 20. Um, if I had more time, I would have told you what I think. But uh, Preeti, I'm going to, I had one more slide, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to hand over to, uh, hand over to you. For any, I mean, I, I was joking. I'm happy to take any questions. If I know the answers, uh, I will tell you because I don't know the answer. That's why I asked you the question. Back to you, Preeti. Uh, Terribly sorry. This is usually this, oh, this is the worst part of my job. Oh, <laughs> the timekeeping. Um, oh, uh, do we have questions on the? Uh, would one of you want to see if we have questions in the Slido link? Because I don't have any with me. Otherwise, we could just take questions by uh, people raising their hand, please. Yeah. If you yeah. can have any questions, I mean, love to take those now. Yeah. If you yeah. Oh, share few words, yeah, let me just. Hash, yeah. please Arsh. go ahead. Um, yeah. So, first of all, very uh, good morning. Thank you. So, I am currently a uh, uh, 
undergraduate student and i am sir very interesting in uh, uh, things related to doing uh, ai or uh, knowing about the ai sir can you please guide me uh, what to, uh, to be the key points to be make sure to proceed in the future of ai so harsh i will entertain questions on ai and creativity today if that's okay do me a favor here i've put my linkedin uh, uh, address and as well as my site just ask me separately and i'll try and help you on how to get more into ai for which i don't know the answer because i have never studied ai in my life okay so let's kind of talk about more the context today if that's okay with you Arash. sir thank you so much for your valuable time thank you sir no thank you yeah kunal i just freeze i after listening to you i can't help but feel a little apprehensive as to what we are looking at in the future because the, especially the text version of the ai it mm -hmm. seems as if it's an independent separate human entity or human being uh, uh, speaking out um so is that a question or comment or something that for you <laughs> would like to comment upon okay sure look uh, yes there's a lot to be apprehensive about now lot okay uh, ai after nuclear energy, in my view, is the single most powerful thing that we have blundered or come across, uh, invented. And pretty much like nuclear energy, we'll have to do something about it uh, for, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and one of those things which, uh, that's why what I'm doing, um, which is this course on AI ethics and society, is really all about that. Uh, this is not the only one, but now there are every single government, every large big tech has started publishing how to create ethical AI. It's a massive, massive topic in itself, uh, but it's something which we definitely, definitely need to uh, do it at a war footing, wrong words to use, but on a war footing, almost like we as human beings got together uh, and, and, and at least till now managed to control nuclear energy and use it for good so far, at least after Hiroshima. Uh, we, we have that choice uh, with AI also as to how do we create the right ethical AI. Right now, everyone is using AI from a profit motive more than anything else, but we need to start thinking from a societal viewpoint. That's why AI ethics and society, and that's, a, that's absolutely imperative to do. So I'm as apprehensive as you are, but I'm encouraged by the fact that people have at least started thinking that. Great. There is um, there is one question by Bridge Mohan, which is I think maybe as provocative as it gets. Which domain will never be conquered by AI? I don't know the answer, <laughs> uh, but you know, Kai Fu Lee uh, in uh, one of his books, and usually if this talk is longer, I do refer to that. Uh, Kai Fu Lee in one of his books, I forget which one, maybe the one which I showed you, uh, has kind of talked about not one but. 10 domains where he believes humans will always be uh, superior to AI. Uh, and he's created a matrix to get at those 10 jobs in a sense or domains. And that matrix is uh, creativity in some sense on one axis and care, compassion, love on the other axis. So it's, he calls it compassion or love. And so the high compassion, high creativity uh, areas and you know stuff like adult care, nursing, even management, even a CEO's job. Okay, uh, uh, assuming it's compassionate, uh, and you know a few such ways. Ten of those are a cheat list, if it may. Okay, which uh, are there, and uh, the premise behind that really is that whatever else you can make AI do in the future, teaching it to love okay, or emotion is going to be super difficult, if not impossible. And so, you know, things high in that well. So maybe you want to go more to Kai Fuli's book for more exact answers. I think uh, I remember saying this once in an editorial long back, that one person's uh, science fiction becomes another person's reality. And that's how fast science and tech sometimes move that what you used to think you saw in movies and suddenly you're seeing it in the real world. Uh, I think, Siddharth, you had asked a question if you're still there, Sid. Um, 
Uh, Sid was, I think, asking about instances of blind debates. I don't know if that. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I saw that, Sid. Sorry. Uh, Sid is here. Yeah. yeah. Sid, I saw that question. I don't know the answer. Uh, it would be interesting to have that quote unquote blind debate. I, uh, I don't know what the outcome would be. Uh, in fact, it would be like a Turing test in a sense. Exactly. It's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of an advanced Turing test in that sense. A lot of debunking of Turing tests have also happened, by the way, that whether Turing test is the right way to you know decide these things or not. Uh, but I, I, I don't know whether it's been done or not. I'm sure if we ask AI-powered Google, maybe we'll get an answer. I think Turing test at least is a good fundamental benchmark, right? That if you can't tell yeah. without visual cues, then yeah. it seems to be a good starting point. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it would be a good starting point. You know, uh, on these uh, GPT ones, there have been a lot of these blind things, okay, in text generators uh, that, you know, to guess whether this was, this happened through a human being or not. I, I haven't done any deep study on that to know what the outcomes were. But I know that in the text generators, there have been these quote-unquote blind slash during tests. I don't know about on the debating board. Any and other? What about the Sorry, yeah. Sorry, please. So do you know what happened in those tests? No, that's why I said I don't know. I haven't done any. I haven't kind of researched that, frankly. I just know they've happened. And I'm sure the answer will be in some... It. Uh, it guessed and it some it didn't. I don't think there's going to be a deterministic definite answer to that. Uh, I think that is a great note also to leave a discussion like this because there will always be more questions than answers. And that uh, that is what the beauty of, of, of uh, you know, any field really is, I feel. Um, thank you so much, Jaspreet. We can't thank you enough for taking time out. And also, it's like for everyone, it's strange times of the day uh, to, to be here. Thank you so much. And I'm really um, delighted to have you here with us.